Welcome to another editorial on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today I am talking about the G League and the NCAA. So let's get right to it. Um, I've said previously in different iterations, but I will repeat again for the new people and the lazy people. All right. I've said for many years, um, first of all, I'm not going to go into the whole NCAA conversation about players and compensation because I could talk forever. But I've said on the football side what I would do or sports side in general, but basketball specifically, I've talked about what I would do. And that is this. That is something that was talked about by Adam Silver. I don't know who brought it to him. I don't know who originated the idea on their side, but I know me and other people have talked about this for a while. They need to make a delineation between professional sports and co collegiate sports. And a lot of people are talking about that right now. And again, that's a bigger conversation that I'm not going to get into right now, but I might get into it later this week. But that delineation in the NBA comes with this structure. Either you go to the NBA or not to the NBA, you go to the NCAA, you go to college and you go for three years or you go to the G League and get paid and not go to school, but you go for three years. Now, that's kind of, and I, I don't think Silver said three years exactly. Somebody in the NBA did. I don't remember who. I don't think it was Silver, but that I'm on that path. Three years, maybe two. You could convince me, but three years is what I like. Now, what they currently have is a setup where it's one year in college, then you go pro before you used to come be able to come out of high school, blah, blah, blah. And that's not, I don't think that works. Um, and I don't think the one year works either. The one and done has proved to be problematic as well. Um, so this all comes out of the story of Jalen Green, the number one rated prospect this year who decided to go to the G League and something that I didn't even know that they had. I know they were talking about it. Like I said, Adam Silver was talking about the year requirement, and everything, and maybe using the G League as a pathway. I didn't know they already had this. They have a professional pathway program in the G League where instead of going to college, you could go to the G League and you play in the G League for a year instead of college. And they are paying this guy they said 500000 plus. They're not being real uh, upfront with the numbers, but somewhere around there, somewhere where around half a mil. Obviously, you can do uh, sneaker deals and all that other stuff, but you play in the G League for your year before you are eligible to go because it's one year out of uh, high school. It's not one year of college, one year out of high school. We know the Ball family um, and some other people, but they're one of the first big names to skip college. Well, Lonzo went to UCLA, but the other two went overseas instead of playing um, here. And now look, the European countries and Chinese and the other places, they do it very different with their amateur sports because they don't really have amateur sports. They have professional sports like a lot of the soccer players have been professional since they were uh, teenagers or younger. Same thing with basketball. And I think, again, not trying to get into the bigger conversation, I think that could work if we had a society that really set up our education and the structure, but we don't have that. So right now we have people that have to go to school um, and till you know, you finish high school. So. What I'm trying to say is I think this is a good step uh, and it was a a right step in the this is a step in the right direction. There we go. And I think it's a good move because overall, I do believe that these young students need to have that buffer between professional sports. Um, obviously, in football, the case has always been the physical um, difference between grown men and um, younger players. And there is definitely that. There's definitely that. The difference between KD now and KD coming out. LeBron's been a freak of nature, but even he's gotten bigger. Dwight Howard, like, yes, you physically fill out just that. That's the biology of it later on. And so that that's going to happen. 
But um, I think also the mental part of it as well, they're not ready, especially in this generation where the mental fragility is much more high. Um, you have to give them some type of support and some development before throwing them in there. Not to mention the game suffers like we are getting a little bit better in the NBA now because players realize this stupid super, super team stuff isn't the way to go because they can't handle it with their egos, but also it's a bad product for basketball. Um, So it's getting a little bit more parity, but still it's the same. There's no player, maybe outside of Luca, but you know, he's European, foreign, different. Um, But there's no player that just comes on the scene and has it. And you're like the top dog. Like, even if you're really good, your rookie year, you have to gradually develop because, Again, most of the picks in the first round don't work out. Most of the picks in the lottery don't work out. And that should never be the case. And it happens more and more because you have players that are not developed. They go to college. They don't put their full foot forward. They don't develop as a person socially. And then they don't really develop basketball-wise because they're not learning anything with any repetition. They're just doing it for the year. And so... Again, the long haul, I think you're talking about three years in the G League, three years in college, whichever one. Um, it's no secret that a lot of good players in the NBA that especially have longevity tend to be players that were um, seniors or juniors in college. They stayed longer. They really honed their skills. And then we know, again, a lot of players who might turn out really bad early It takes them a long time to get back into it. Now, it's no secret. I've been getting back into the NBA a little bit more. Um, I've been off of it for a while since the whole Durant thing. Like, it's just whatever. Um, But I've been into it a little more. There's more parity now. I've been better, so I'll be watching games. And it, it, it blows my mind to see a lot of these players that were, like, hot shot prospects just now becoming solid basketball players, solid role players. And there's a long list. There's a much longer list than there's a list of star players. And the thing is, they just, they don't learn basketball. I mean, I was listening to James Harden talk about getting back with KD. And he even talked like, we didn't know basketball back then. We didn't understand any of it. Like, we was just trying to shoot, trying to get points. Like, they didn't know the game, and now they're much older. And now, obviously, those are all stars, but I think that tributes to a lot of players. If that happens to stars, imagine how it happens to the mid-tier and the lower tier. It takes them a while to get good, and that year, those years of frustration, that should be spent in college or in another program. Me, If you know me, I'm an educator. I'm in higher ed. I believe college works for everybody on a certain level. But I do recognize this alternative because, again, it's not to me about get in school, get in school. If you're not going to give your best foot forward, then don't go to school. But I don't think that means they need to go to the NBA. And obviously, a lot of people in the NBA agree with that. And so uh, the number one prospect is going to the G League for a year. And I, I think that's a good compromise. Again, we need to up the years. It, we need to, I mean, even if it's two years, you're going to get better because a lot of the, because everybody's on the top prospect of next year's schedule. And so now you think about all the top prospects of next year. If you s- switch it to two years, now they're going to get mingled up with the uh, senior prospects, junior prospects of next year because they got pushed back a year. And now you got a much deeper pool and that's going to continue to work itself out. And again, by the time you get a Jalen Green to come out, he's got two years of professional experience, not just the basketball part either. And I'm a coach. Like if you're a coach, if you're an educator, if you've been around this system, you know how these young people develop. It means something to know how to uh, to to run your bank account to know who to trust when it comes to dealing with your money, to know how to invest, to know how to set up a schedule, to know to how to navigate and to pursue the things you want to do. And it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into it to play the game of basketball. It's a lot that goes into it to be in 
a very wealthy person. And then on top of there's a lot to go into it to be your own man. So there's a lot of development that needs to happen. And I think you give these players time and this is the right way to do it. Now, obviously, I'm saying that the G League is attacking the NCAA. And I believe that. I think eventually the NCAA is going to be done as we know it. There's already a lot of um, cultural and legal push to separate sports out of colleges. And again, I'm not going to jump into that long discussion. I'm going to do that this week, actually, because now I'm getting fired up. But um, what I will say is even despite that, I think this move and I don't think the NFL has the capacity to do a similar thing because they don't have a developmental league. The NBA already had one in the D League, now the G League. And so you could funnel them in. Plus, you just need two hoops in the basketball. You don't need all the equipment and the money that comes with football. So while the NFL can't necessarily do it, I do think that the NBA and other professional sports are in good position to do this, where it's like, okay, look, if you're not going to give your best foot in, uh, forward in uh, college, then come here. And so, again, some people are like, well, you know, you're, you're reaching. I don't think so. I think that the number one, first of all, whenever you have any initiative, you got to have cachet, clout with it. Now, people use clout all the time the wrong way these days, but this is true clout. The number one consensus, number one prospect that moves. Now, obviously, we haven't heard about too many other prospects. But look, if you look at the top 100 and 99 of them go to college, but one goes to the D League or the G League and that one is the top prospect that gives it so much more legitimacy and weight behind it. And so I think this move is huge. And again, somebody has to start it. It's not like, oh, I'm going to the G League and all the top prospects are going to go. No, it's going to take time because it's brand new. People aren't used to that. But over time, it's going to become normalized. And I don't even think it's going to be that long a time where next year a lot of people might think of that because, look, they're going to continue to try to do illegal stuff in NCAA and other people are going to continue to try to stop them. But if you're talking about just legit money, you don't have to go through any of that hassle. You say, here, here's half a mil right now for all those uh poverty porn, which I hate. Oh, uh, like, and it's so weird how people use that as a white narrative to justify, like, exploiting these athletes and stuff. But they're like, oh, my God. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to feed your family? Wouldn't you want to be able to pay some bills? You're not in position not to take the money right now, bro. We talking about big money. Some people, you know how long it'll take for uh, some people to even see 500,000 in their career? Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, if you actually been poor, you would know that that difference, it, you know, it ain't a whole bunch to somebody that ain't seen that much money before. And so, again, this whole crying idea that, oh, they got to go right now. They got to make the meal. They got to make the money decision. This is a this is a compromise. You get money. You get great money. Now, the G League usually works somewhere lower than that. But they said for these prospects, they'll go up to five hundred thousand. Now, to me, I think still, if it was me, I would change that. I go to fifty thousand. I mean, that's a good average salary because again a lot of issues that come especially in basketball is that these players don't know how to manage money and so they've tried to do a lot of things in the ncaa with you know financial classes awareness blah 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 it, it's tough especially when you got uh people that dismiss the college uh education all all around but in the g league you know it's a little more hands-on where they're talking about their pay for their classes if they want to take classes. Highly doubt they'll do that. But I like that op excuse me, that option where they can still get some education if they want it. I doubt any basketball player would do it, but they want it. Now I would do on top of that is make mandatory financial classes. Cause again, it's a lot of hard work to get specific classes in college. Like they want everybody's like, how come they don't just set up a curriculum for athletes? That's really hard because NC like you can't give them preferential treatment like they got their own special degree and stuff. You can't do that. It's a lot of political stuff you got to go through. 
But in the G League, you can do that. You can set up a curriculum specifically to teach them how to be professional athletes. You could go through social media classes. You could do financial classes. You could figure out how to look at contracts. And you could do a lot of good stuff with them. And then, you know, you give them that 50000 so that they can manage. I mean, most of these players, I mean, some people come from good families. But most of these players, they have their own money to manage, even a hundred k. You give them a hundred K, a six figure salary. Most people don't get that. You give them that while they're there. Let them figure out how to manage that money. I mean, you can have them have agents. Even if it's me, I'm just thinking I would, um, maybe not have any financial advisors at first so they could learn how to manage 100 K and figure out how to do things. And then that way, when they do get drafted and they got millions, Now, you know, you could get financial advisors, but they have some understanding. That's just me. But either way, there's a lot of good ways you can handle that. And so, um, again, for me, I think it's a nice compromise between the two. And so, yes, you got players still going to college, a lot of them now. People might say, bro, you tweaking and it's never going to happen. But to me, my answer would be or my question would be, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of going to college if I'm Ben Simmons? We don't play school. We play basketball. That was Cardell Jones. But he basically said the same thing. They said Ben Simmons never went to class. If you won and done with the regular basketball season, that means you really only there for like a semester and then you out. And so, like, again, what's the point? What, what What's the benefit there? Um, You know, what I mean, what's the benefit? That's that. That'd be my question. Yes, there's the logo, there's the lights and all that, but that money not going to you. And so um, if you want to make some money in your pocket, if you want to be around professional coaches and be around a professional game, if you want, you know, all that freedom that comes with being a professional, but still being developed. Like, that's not like they saying, again, come out of high school, go to the NBA, they throwing you to the wolves. No, they're really teaching you. I mean, and it's still, you listen to some of these players, you know, a lot of players are doing podcasts and stuff. You listen to some of these players from back in the day, they tell you, like, coming straight to the NBA was a, a shock. I mean, even listen, I mean, Mike went to college, but some of, you know, these uh early 90s, early 2000 guys, they tell you it was a shock. It was like, bro, like you get there and like these are grown men and people even say that in the NFL and they've been in college. You know, they come to uh, NFL 21 years old. But it was like these are grown men and you're not ready for all the things socially. And so I think this is a good way. Like you got the G League, invite the whole G League to the all star game. So they're around the stars and you see the NBA players. And they like, yo, these the up and coming or even have a G League versus the rookie. If you have like a G League uh, all stars versus the rookie uh, all star or like all rookie team, bro, that that would be a great game or at least just invite them there. Like you could do so many developmental things. Um, cause you are the NBA, you got all the resources. And I think one, and then uh, obviously you could get some money now that you got big names in the G League. Bro, I think 100% the NCAA is in trouble. I love this move. I think they can improve on it, but I love it right now. And I think this is the future. So, uh, go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.